Welcome. I am the mother of Steve Rumler, who died of a drug overdose after becoming addicted to the Oxycontin that was prescribed to him for his chronic pain. Drug overdoses are now killing more Americans than car crashes. One person dies every six minutes, 16 minutes in this country of a drug overdose. We are fed up. I am a gymnast and a diver. My friends and colleagues describe me as intelligent, personable, and well-spoken. I was given opportunities that people only dream of. I wanted for nothing. I essentially had the perfect life, according to everyone that knew me. I am college educated. I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am a friend. And I am an opioid addict. One fateful night, when I was 18 years old, I began a deeper and more tragic spiral. I decided to snort one small pill that would forever change the course of my life. Looking back, it is absolutely terrifying that the one substance that nearly led to my death was so readily available to young kids. I'm one of the lucky ones. I now stand in front of you two and a half years clean. Thank you. But not everyone is as lucky as I am. So many loved ones have been lost to this terrible epidemic that we are facing. And now I'd like to invite you all to join me in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I'm here to represent every single person that we lost to opiates. You know, isn't it funny that um, the day that we gather over here, the government is shut down. It's been shut down for us for the past 10 years or more. We haven't had no action from some of the clowns that run FDA. <coughs> And, and HHS. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pissed. I want some action. I want some people to account for what they do. I was the first one to hold my son when he was born. And I was the last one to hold him when they left this world. My son put a shotgun to his neck and took his life. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like that pain. There's nothing like it when you see your son struggling to breathe and he's splattered all over the wall. Now, I knew back then, two years ago, that I was not going to sit still. I knew back then that something had to be done. We had to inform people. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I'll be damned if I'm going to sit here today and let some clown feel like he's God and decide that he's not going to upschedule hydrocodone and he's not going to do anything because my son was prescribed into addiction by a doctor. If we all speak in one voice, we can change this. We can get this to stop. All we got to do is set a mind to do it. Forget about everything else. The longer this is delayed, the more kids are dying. Just think about it. The DEA has asked in 2004 to upschedule hydrocodone. 2004, that's nine years. My God, in, in, in 10 years in Iraq, we lost 4,000 people. In one year, one year, we lose over 16,000 people. What's wrong with them? Are our kids just throwaway kids? No. Who decides who's to die and who's to live? So I ask you, speak in one voice, get ready, because right after this, we're going to walk down to HHS and kick Sebelia's ass.
I'd like to now speak not only for my son Aaron and our family, but also for all those who could not be with us today and all the families forever affected by the prescription drug epidemic. I close my eyes, it's 2005, and I hear the doctor say, I'm sorry for your loss, you're going to lose your son today. A night of friends, oxy and pills, left Aaron lifeless, cold and still. He laid in a coma three and a half weeks, alone, non-responsive, and unreachable sleep. His family gathered, grieved, and cried. None understood, and all wondered why. On day 26, Aaron's destiny changed. He would survive, but not unscathed. Aaron's a quadriplegic who cannot speak. His wheelchair will be his permanent seat. We care for him daily, yet feel very blessed. 10,947 others that year put loved ones to rest. In 2008, another 14,000 plus. When will this end? When is enough enough? Again in 2010, overdose deaths pick up steam. Another 16,651 will never achieve their dreams. I speak to our leaders whom we've entrusted our care, help end this epidemic, the death and despair. We're first to aid others in lands across the sea, ending their anguish, suffering, and disease. Let's act here at home with that same conviction to end loss of life and the disease of addiction. Let's rise above ego, power, and greed, make policy changes, and help those in need. It's too late for Aaron and far too many others who've lost mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers. I ask you to act quickly. Heal, heal our country, hear our pleas. Please do what is needed. God bless and Godspeed. For my son, he graduated high school, went to somebody's house, and was given an Oxycontin on a mirror by someone's father, who was not a pain patient, not a legitimate one. He walked with a cane, but he didn't have pain. And there are people that do, and I want to acknowledge that. But there are too many that don't, that just give it out, deal it, and kill people. And many of our kids might end up dealing it themselves because they're gone after they get that addiction and then they need to feed it and that becomes their only role in life every day is where am I going to get my next fix because I can't live without it. It takes someone's child and replaces it, him or her with someone else. I'm fed up. I'm tired of the death. I'm tired of the destruction. I'm proud of all the people that are here that came together from all over the country. In Massachusetts, we just had a celebration at our state house that there's been 2,000 saves since they started nasal naloxone. I have a hard time with the word celebrate. I agree with the other speakers. We shouldn't need it. And until they do something back here, we're just going to keep losing more and more precious lives. 
These are our sons, our daughters, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers. I'm proud to stand up with everybody today, and I hope this is the first of many, and I hope someday we don't have to do this anymore, but I'll never give up. The government may have shut down, but I won't ever give up. Thank you. I am tired, and I'm feeling really emotional today. I have to tell you that I have been responsible for putting up the pictures of your loved ones on Facebook and putting up the, getting the names of all the loved ones to Pete, getting Scarlett and Natalie, the pictures of your loved ones. I have never in my life done anything so challenging, and I am a person in recovery. I do not understand why in our great country, a place where we have freedom, where we have protection set up to help people live a quality life, I do not understand why the number one prescribed drug in our country today is heroin. Somebody tell me that they, does everybody here know that Vicodin is the same thing as heroin. Let me see some hands. Do we know this? Okay, how come our doctors don't know that? So these are the things we need to do. You need to keep standing up. We need to change prescribing practices. We need to educate people, as well, the public, as well as the recovery community, as well as doctors. We need 911 Good Samaritan in your state, in every state, a national law. We need to reduce stigma. Being an addict is not a moral failing. It is a disease. Thank you very much for being here. I'm proud of each and every one of you. My wife and I lost our 18-year-old daughter, Emily, uh, after she consumed one Oxycontin pill, swallowed whole, that had been offered to her by a relative. Nobody called 911. She was simply left alone to die on a couch. Uh, my daughter was a wonderful young lady. She was the babysitter next door. She was the friendliest person I've ever known. I mean, she was just incredibly sweet and, and friendly. And, you know, this was, we just feel, that, you know, this just wasn't supposed to happen to her. And it, it just came out of the, out of the blue. And uh, she died three days before her first day in college. Her new life just about to explode ahead of her. And she, she didn't make it to that classroom. But the lesson from Emily's tragedy is the, these opioid drugs are extremely dangerous. One pill can kill. Oxycontin, after all, is nothing more than legalized heroin. Anyway, I miss Emily, and it, it really hurts. This rally is intended to induce urgently needed action because people are dying every day from painkillers. Today we will lose 45 people from prescription opioids. As Dr. Kolodny said, that's a significant undercount. These are regular, average, everyday Americans, okay? Let's shatter the myth. People like Emily are dying every day. I would like to thank you for attending this rally and for speaking out. Our collective voices will be heard. Thank you very much.